Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Uh, doing something different than Harleys today, because Noble Moto covers all bikes. Got a uh, Ducati Hyperstrata up here on the lift, uh, loan to me from a buddy of mine. I uh, need some chain sprockets put on, so we're going to give the rundown of uh, replacing all the chain sprockets uh, on the Hyperstrata here, and uh, all the general procedures that go along with that. So one of the first things we're going to look at is pulling off the front covers, the front cover here on the front sprocket, and then pulling off the clip and the safety wire and everything on the rear nut. Because we want to break free the rear nut and the front sprocket nut first before we take the chain off, before we even loosen up the chain. Because we're going to need that whole mechanical assembly to help lock everything in place so we can break it free. Now, I will zip tie the rear brake lever on because I don't have an assistant here on hand. Uh, and that'll help hold the rear wheel, rear tire in place. And then, if need be, if that's not enough, I should be able to slide something soft, like a piece of wood, through the rear wheel uh, and up against the swing arm, and that will help keep the rear wheel from rotating uh, as we break the bolts free, and then down the road as we tighten them back up. Of course, whatever you use, make sure it doesn't scratch up your wheel or damage anything, and make sure you don't pinch anything important. But with a little creativity, you should be able to figure something out to help hold it all in place. So, let's get right to it. All right, we're down here at the front sprocket, and uh, we got to pull this little cover off here. And um, so, first thing we're going to do is pull the wiring out of the way. Very careful touch with this, because you don't want to damage the wiring anyway. And it should just snap right on out of there with minimal struggles. And we'll just carefully move it over the side, not to bend around too much. It'll have to get moved periodically. Now, of course, to pull these cover bolts off of here, uh, it will take a 4mm Allen wrench. And we could probably do this with the shifter on. I'm pretty sure the service manual uh, said you don't have to take the shifter off. Uh, don't quote me on that. But um, in order to get the socket on here, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. So we're going to take the shifter off. We're going to undo it here and then undo it here. Um, we won't undo our linkage here or anything. That way, when we put it back on, all our settings will still be right. So, first thing is um, the actual lever itself, and that is a 6mm Allen wrench. And that should just screw right on out of there. Full disclosure, I did go through and break, break a bunch of these bolts free before I shot this. And since it's coming with me here a little bit, I thought this would... Oh, there it goes. While we're in here, we'll clean up this pivot point, put a little uh, fresh never sees or appropriate lubricant on there. Keep track of your spacers as they fall off. But we'll put a little fresh lubricant on there. That way it'll uh, keep from wearing out prematurely and still be good for a long time. Now back here on the actual spline shaft, we've got a 5mm Allen wrench. And of course the infamous 10mm box end wrench on the back. This nut is probably going to fall as soon as you take it off of here, so be ready. Take the bolt out, set that in a safe location, drop your shifter on the lift, then take your nut right off of there. And of course, we will thread that back onto the fastener to help keep track of it. Set that off to the side in a safe location. Then from here, we can pull this uh, plastic cover off, 4 millimeter Allen wrench, and just lefty loosey these suckers right on out of there. Pull this cover right off of there, set this to the side in a safe location. So before we can remove the nut that holds the front sprocket on, there is a washer that's behind this and it gets bent over, if you can see it here, it gets bent over and that little bend over of the washer there helps hold the nut in place. Works kind of like a retaining clip. So it's a pretty soft piece of steel, so you can just take a small, either a small blade style punch or even your old favorite flathead screwdriver and just give it a little tap there and you should be able to bend it back and 
And once you get started, back out of the way. You can take a proper punch, or you can use a screwdriver if you want, and hammer it back flat so the socket will clear it. Ta-da! Doesn't have to be perfect, just back out of the way enough so the socket will clear. All right, we have the washer has been flattened out. We have a 32 millimeter socket, and uh, I have the rear wheel braced, uh, locked in place with a piece of wood. Uh, you will have to engineer how to do this on your own back there. I'm not giving any advice, um, but wherever you put your brace at, um, make sure it doesn't pinch any brake lines or ABS lines or anything like that. So, put your socket up on here, lefty loosey. That sucker right off there. Full disclosure, I broke it free. You can also use an impact to get this thing free too. Okay, we're back here at the rear sprocket. And I'm uh, going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and just pull this little clip right off of here. Should come off fairly simply. Pull that one off right there, just like that. And down out of there and hang on to this. Carefully you don't bend this too far because we are going to reuse it. Put that in a safe space. Okay, so before I take this rear nut off here, I have this the uh, socket and um uh but because I don't want to put a bunch of marks on this thing, especially if you were to have to use impact. So I'm gonna take an old t-shirt and wrap it around the socket there. I should be able to get the socket back up on there. You want to make sure it's all the way on there and tight, because you are taking up a little bit of space there with your cloth. But, um, you know, the old worn-out shirt or even shop rag doesn't, isn't that thick. So, should be able to force it still on there, and it won't leave any uh, marks on the nut there. So, from there, should be able to just lefty-loosey it. And break that thing free like that. And once you break it free... You can probably take the rag out of there and just put the socket on there by hand and spin that sucker right off. All right, now the uh, next step before we can actually relieve the tension is there are two clamp bolts right here. Uh, I think you can only see one of them, but take my word for it, the other one's right here and this one. And uh, we're just going to loosen these free. It's a big kind of a... Uh, spring clamp type thing that actually holds the uh, rear tensioner in place. So we're going to take a 14 millimeter socket and this one we could go straight on but we'll probably need a swivel for this or you can risk busting your knuckles in there uh, with a box end wrench. Back that sucker right off. And you'll take it completely out. Just break it free. Try not to scratch up the wheels as you do this. Spin that one loose. All right, don't leave your socket in there. Next step, and uh, this will show up more once I actually take the thing, once I actually take the sprocket off of there. There is a uh, kind of a cog shaft back here. If you take a spanner wrench and you hook it on there, and as you turn that, this whole assembly is cammed, kind of like an off-center type thing. And as you turn it, that whole uh, cammed assembly moves around. And that is what actually sets your tension, because it moves your rear wheel forwards and backwards slightly. That's only on the single side swing arm setup. Um, so once I actually take the sprocket off of here, you'll actually be able to see where I'm grabbing with the spanner wrench. Uh, and I'll give a little better explanation then. Great. Do a fade in. From there, set the chain off to the side. Remember, there's another little washer back here. Don't lose that. And we can take this over the workbench, and unbolt these, and break it free. Remember, there's an Allen socket in the other side because you know Ducati. You like to be difficult. Uh, so you can break these free and then swap out the sprocket out over on your bench. Okay, the next step here is we have to break the rear chain or break the chain free. So we're going to use our chain breaker. The way this works is it's spring loaded here. As you can see, you squeeze it so it catches on the on the chain there. And then as you turn this down, this little plunger in the center pushes forward, 
and pushes the center piece of the uh, center shaft of the chain out. So you have to do this on each side of one of the outer links. And once you crank it all the way through, you should be able to wrestle around with your hand a little bit and break the chain free. Very handy tool to have. So just clamp it on right there, just like that. Just thread it all the way in until it stops. You'll feel the chain actually pop free. And back it off and go to the other side of that link. Or the other pin on that link. And of course, once you do this, you cannot put this back together. It is, you know, it is garbage at this point. This link is. center off there. And there you can see there's our old o-rings. Slide the chain out just like that. Then you should be able to pull the chain right out through the whole bike. With the bike in neutral of course. Discard this off to the side. Then uh, move over to the front sprocket. Okay. Chain is now off, so you should be able to grab the front sprocket. Just slide it right on off of there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You've got to be fucking shitting me. Fuck you, Ducati. Okay, so. On any other motorcycle I've ever worked on, um, metric bikes anyways, uh, usually at the point you take the nut and the chain off and everything, you can slide the sprocket off. Um, apparently someone Ducati wanted to be difficult. Um, so we have to remove this bolt here that holds the kickstand mount on, this bolt and this bolt. Those hold half of the swing arm mount on, or half of the uh, center stand mount on. It is also attached to the swing arm bolt here. And we're not going to pull the swing arm bolt out because once we undo these, we can pivot this whole assembly and they give us a few thousandths of an inch clearance to slide this sprocket past and to slide the new sprocket on. So, um, it's a rather bizarre setup, but it's not nearly as obnoxious as it seems initially. So, then take our 8mm uh, wrench, 8mm Allen socket, wrench these out of here. And I want to be careful we don't damage the kickstand mount as we do this, or the kickstand um, switch. Or your bike won't start. Pivot this whole assembly. We're gonna to have to push the center stand down. Let's flip the kickstand down so that mount relaxes. Push the center stand down a little bit, and you can pivot the whole mount off to the side. And this comes off of here with just barely enough clearance. Three. Okay, the next step is to put the new front sprocket on here. Um, obviously, I cleaned everything up in here. All the splines are good. Uh, I sized it up to the old sprocket, give it a good eyeball, make sure the spline is still the same. I still have all this unbolted, so we should be able to slide it through here just barely with enough clearance. Sorry if my hand's in the way, but it does fit, I swear. But you just have very low clearance to get that sucker in there. Make sure you don't catch your wires. Slide that on there. Take your locking nut with the spline or the locking washer that goes over top of the spline there, like so. There we go. And then uh, we're going to take our nut, and for now, 
I'm just going to start it on here to keep track of it. Don't run it in too far yet or you might forget to tighten it up. And I'm going to wait until I have the chain on here to actually torque all that down because it will help hold it in place. Uh, the next step from here is we can put our kickstand and center stand mounts back in place and get all that button back up. Okay, now when you reassemble this, there was these two small washers, one and two there, and they actually go behind this here. That kind of stops the rubber isolator, and then, uh, you know, the bolt threads through there like so. So, also, the longer bolt goes in the back, shorter bolt goes in the front one of these two. So we're going to take these and slide them back in here. This back one won't be bad, but this front one might be a bit of a challenge to get in place. This may take a few tries. complicated than it needed to be. Alright, next thing we're going to do here is going to remove this uh, cush mount here, a sprocket mount, uh, off the sprocket. This takes a 15 millimeter wrench on the hex head there, and the Allen side is a 12 millimeter, and uh, just spin these all out. Now these work pretty tight. Once again, I broke them all free before I shot this. off of there. We're going to clean this up really well. I'm going to clean up all the uh, you know, mating surfaces here. Clean out the spline, everything, this centerpiece. Um, everything takes up space, including dirt and grease. We don't want that. So clean it all out really well. Then uh, take these little rubber cush isolators here. Slide these out of your old sprocket. It should slide out. Ta-da! Ta-da! Take this. Make some yard art out of it. Okay, so we got our new sprocket here. We'll just match that up to our old one. Make sure all the mounts and everything line up. Make sure nothing sketchy is going on. Uh, it's a much better looking sprocket. Uh, it's black and shinier, so therefore the bike should be faster. Uh, but we can just take our uh, rubber isolator bushings here. Drop them all in there. Two, 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 two. Spin it around. Two, two. Man, that looks pretty. Take our cleaned up mount, slide it right up on there, just like so. Then we can take our nuts, thread them right up on there. Then we'll torque these down in a crisscross pattern to manufacturer's specifications. Three. All right, so as I explained earlier, or tried to explain earlier, you can s this is the cam that actually is also the hub, um, and this is how you actually tension your chain. 
as you can see this center this piece here which is your sprocket and your you know where your sprocket goes and your axle that actually runs through is offset from this whole assembly here so you can take your spanner wrench to tension it and if you pull on this cautious of your knuckles you can see how it actually moves the axle back further by doing that that is what you're using to actually tension your chain so recommend before you do it I mean, obviously it was backed into the point of the chain being loose but as you back it pretty close to where the axle is kind of offset to about 9 o'clock of the hub, approximately. That way you got lots of throw uh, to tension out the chain. So, we have our uh, spline shaft cleaned up there and everything. We have our new setup right here. We're just going to slide this right up on here. Just like so. We'll take our washer we took off of here earlier, cleaned up, slide that up on there. And we'll take the nut that we took off earlier, also cleaned up and free of dirt there. Drop the nut on the, work, on the bench once, then thread it back up on here. And we do this this is really a critical nut. We want to torque this to manufacturer's specifications. This is a fine thread, hollow shaft, thin wall nut. Don't want this sucker coming loose. So we will torque that down. All right, we have our new chain here. Just pull it up out of the package. And um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to slide it through, starting from the back, over the top of the swing arm, around the front sprocket in the back. The reason behind doing that is I like to have both ends of the chain uh, sit on the rear sprocket. That way when I'm pressing the master link together, the sprocket itself kind of works like a third hand and helps to hold everything in place. So we'll slide it through here. Just like that. Drop it down into the sprocket. Rotate it around. Bike's in neutral, of course. I'm going to click that in the teeth of the sprag there. Roll that up just like that. Now we're ready to put in the master link. Alright, so the next step is to put in a master link. Like I said, you have two styles of master links. One have a little clip on here, and the other one's rivet on. I like the rivet on ones, um, because once they're on there, they're on there, obviously. It's a permanent setup. Uh, if you're changing a lot of sprockets or racing, well, if you're changing a lot of sprockets, you might like the clip style one. I would say if you're doing anything remotely high speed, throw the, uh, put the uh, rivet style one on there. They're a little stronger, uh, and they're better for high load conditions and high RPMs. So they give you a little packet here of grease. And the point behind this is, we're going to take the grease and put it on the shafts of the master link here. Whoop. Make a big old mess as we're doing it. And, uh, the idea is this lubricates everything. we got the two new seals here already on there. So seals are nice and lubricated up. Shafts nice and lubricated. We can slide in from behind. Just like that. Now we can take the two new O-rings that come with the master, the rivet style master link, put some grease on them, and whoop, slide that one on there. Slide that one on there. Careful, they might fall off. They fall off. Make sure you clean them before you put them back on. And take the new plate, whoops, sorry, take the new plate of your new master link. You should be able to push it on there with your thumbs to at least get it started. And sometimes it'll go all the way on, sometimes you have to use a pair of pliers or something to kind of squeeze it in place there. Alright, so I'm not going to run through all the options of the master link press, but basically just know which piece is which. 
This is a whole other video in itself. Or read the instructions that come with the Master Link video, or the Master Link press. Then you have your little press pieces here. Whoops, sorry. They go up on there. Then you can clamp these in place. And initially, I'm just going to press the backing plate fully on there. Let's put a little, hold this with a little T handle here. I can hold it, put a wrench on there. I'll tighten it up a little bit, and all I'm doing now is I'm taking the two outer plates and fine, doing the final squeeze of them into place. As soon as I figure out what the fuck size this is. Alright, so... This is just kind of hanging out in here right now. Doesn't even really need to be in here. So we'll just crank this in. This won't take a ton of force. Boop, when you feel it kind of mechanically bind up, it's bottomed out. So from there, we can slide up in place. Now there's little notches on here that the uh, pin of the master link kind of groove into. So they kind of snap into place. If you put a little pressure on it, you'll feel it locate itself. Of course, press this one in. Doot. Just like that. Alright, now that is, uh, the plate is pressed into place, you can see how we have the two little ends here sticking out. Oops, sorry, these two little ends here sticking out. So now, we're going to take the same tool, we're going to change it out, and the thing that actually does the pressing is this little ball bearing looking thing. And the idea is that little ball bearing sits down that notch, and as we tighten it up, it'll actually just kind of mushroom this whole pin out. The idea is, once this pin mushrooms out on each one, the plate can't come back off, and we're good to go. But once it's locked into place, again, take your wrench, tighten it up on there. And you'll feel like it kind of spreads a little bit as you tighten it up. And all of a sudden it'll just kind of mechanically stop right about there. And we will go to the next one. Alright, so now it's all pressed down there. Now the question I get a lot is, how do you know that this thing is actually pressed down there enough? We're going to go in with the camera here a little bit. And basically, if you can see here, there's a little step. Probably can't see on the camera. There's a little step here. If you look at it from the front, you can see how it's kind of mushroomed out. As long as you have that little step there, which you can kind of catch with your fingernail or a small flathead screwdriver, that way you know that these have mushroomed out some, and you know it's going to hold the plate in place. Alright, we're going to zoom back out. I just took the nut back off of the back of the, the sprocket here. You want to put a little grease in there, some general all-purpose grease. Lubes up the threads. I'm going to do the same on the front. And since it's such a fine thread, and this sucker is such a heavy torque, you want to make sure those threads are lubricated up really well. Um, now this is torque to, I don't remember what the Newton mount, Newton meters amount was, but uh, it mapped out about 230 foot pounds. So, we'll put this on here and torque this down. Then do the same on the front. The front was around 134 foot pounds, I think. I'm not exactly sure on those numbers. I gotta go look again, but check your service manual. Um, that way, you know, if anything changed from year to year, you'll get the right spec on there. Uh, but before we tighten the, yeah, before we tighten those up, we're going to set the proximate tension for our chain. Now to really get this set, you want to make sure that the bike is actually loaded up and the suspension's loaded because remember, your swing arm pivots here and your chain's there. 
So your tension is going to vary depending on where your swing arm is. So ideally what you're really going for is you want all three of these to be in line. So, which should be somewhere around ride height. Because that's the point where your rear sprocket is going to be the farthest from your front sprocket. And that would be where you had the most tension at. So that's where you want to set your tension to. Also, it's at your ride height and that is also where you spend the most time. So that's where you want to have the optimum tension at. Alright again, so we're going to take our spanner wrench, hook it in back in here, onto those teeth. I'm actually going to link a wrench onto this, mostly because I'm worried um, if I grab this wrench here and then the wrench slips off onto the chain, that's going to be the end of the skin on my knuckles. So it does not really require that much leverage. I'm just trying to get a little bit of safe distance for my hands on this. So from there, just, whoops, that was a little too fast. Let's move the cam assembly around until your chain is almost tensioned up there. So right there, that's a tad bit loose where it's sitting right now, but um, that's pretty close to what we're going to want for our optimum tension. Uh, and like I said, once I get it on the ground and get the bike weighted out, then I'll actually be able to set the actual tension. But that's pretty close to at least get us in the ballpark. There's an actual mathematical calculation of 2% of the center to center distance and all that. Aim for about a half to three quarters of an inch of tension of chain movement uh, once your suspension is at ride height. So we're a little sloppy right now, but like I said, it's going to be set once we get the bike on the ground. So from there, we're going to torque down our two nuts, put our clip back on, put our jam nut back on there, then put our whole front sprocket cover back together, and we're ready to do the final tension, then go ride. Alright, got a rear nut torqued to spec. Now next thing to do is to put the clip back on there. There's two little holes in here. And the uh, pin will drop through one, and it just snap rings around the outside, right on the other one, just like that. That thing should be on there pretty solid, should be good to go. Now we'll move up to the front sprocket, torque that spec, then put all the uh, cover assembly back on there. Great. Alright, front sprocket is torqued down, now we just gotta bend this little flat nut, uh, the flat washer over here. So we're gonna take a little flathead screwdriver and get behind the washer right there. And we're going to tap it up there, bend it on over, bend it over right there. A little patience here, not a whole lot of room to work in there. I'm going to take our actual punch, slide up from underneath there and Perfect. Now, put the cover back on. I'll put the uh, shifter assembly back on there. And uh, we're ready to do a final tension on the chain, and then ready to go right. All right, now before we put the actual shifter back on here, we're gonna put a little grease on the pivot shaft that the shifter rides on. Keeps from wearing out prematurely. There's a little O-ring on the back side. There's a little O-ring on the front side that is right there on the the bolt, and that helps keep the dirt out and the lubricant in. So we'll just slide that up in place. And start that in there with our fingers. Before we get too far with it, we're going to take our fastener here from before. Line up our rod in there. Slide that in, slide the nut on the back of it, get that started, and take our 10 millimeter wrench for the nut, and um, what was this one, 5 millimeter wrench for this shaft, and tighten this up.
and then take our six millimeter tighten this shaft up right here make sure your o-ring stays on back there mine just popped off so I pushed it back in and I pushed the shifter up against the mount there to hold the o-ring in place and I can see the front one see that that's still in place tighten that up torque that down to manufacturer specs right about there all right we are good to go on that now let's just pop the front cover on clean the old uh, chain grease out of the inside of this first make sure you don't pinch any wires when you put this up here in place it should just kind of snap right in now if you remember when I took it apart I uh, found the ball end uh, did not want to go deep enough into the head of the fastener so I'll be putting this back in with a square ended four millimeter allen wrench The last step is to pop the wires right back in there, up into place. Just like so. Take it off the lift, do our final tension, go take it for a test ride. All right, so we've got the bike here in the driveway. Uh, the owner is sitting on it, so this way we can get the actual tension set. And as you can see right now, we're sitting pretty tight. So we are going to loosen up the bolts here on the back. 14 millimeter socket again. So loosen up the clamp. We got the spanner wrench again. I'm try to hook it on by hand. If that doesn't work, we'll use a little bit of a hammer. A little persuasion. Damn it, now that's too loose. So, tighten her back up a little bit. And then we're going for about five-eighths an inch or so slop in there with the bike load up. Just want to make sure there's enough play for expansion contraction. Keep the grease in there. Right about there we're sitting pretty good. And uh, yeah, so from there, tighten the back up. Torque both your clamp bolts spec. You don't need to kill them, just tighten them up. There you have it, you're ready to go ride, that's all I got.